Hey there, friendlies, how's up? Welcome to another video. This time what I'm doing is a long-term uh, review of this Grands Firs Brook Swedish Carving Axe. I did a video on it uh, a couple of years ago, which is linked right up there. And now I've been using it for a long time. It's got a few more dings on it than the last video, but uh, I think that now I can really do a, a real honest long-term review of this as my main sort of spoon blank carving tool. It's more of a green wood carving tool so <clears throat> a couple of well last week I took a you know a small chunk of um, birch out of the freezer soaking wet. Yeah that's really kind of moldy. Um, let's get something out of the way off the bat. Come on wind go away. Okay, um, as I always say, I don't tend to like to keep my axes shaving sharp, but for my carving axes, oh, <laughs> I put a little too much pressure on that last one. For my carving axes, I, um, I take a very different approach, just because carving is much more of a, uh, there you go, that was the whole length of the blade, okay? Uh, for my carving axes, I take a much more uh, exact approach because it's a different it's a different ball of wax than just ha you know whapping wood into uh, firewood at the uh, campsite. One thing I will do is say that the measurements are as follows: the Grandsfer's large carving axe or Scandinavian carving axe has 4.5 inches of that beautifully swept blade. The head is about 2.2 pounds, and the handle is 14 and a half inches and it's left sort of faceted for easier grip while you're flapping away at stuff. It's a hickory handle, it's Swedish steel. So let's, let's do a little, uh, let's do a little test, shall we? I've said this before, but I just want to clarify, since this is another axe making video, that the reason I don't keep axes that aren't carving axes shaving sharp is because if you're going at dry wood for kindling or, you know, you're chopping up logs or whatever, with a blade that is sharpened that fine, you're going to get nicks. It's not because the steel's no good, it's because it's at a very, very fine edge. Couple of other things. I mean, these grand spores are great, but they're not magic. This is a high carbon head, so <laughs> that's that's a happy guy right there. Uh, it's a high carbon head, so it's starting to rain, and I've been pounding it into really wet wood. So I'm gonna take it inside, clean it off, dry it, and oil it right away. All in all, I think this is a great axe. Um, the weight is good. The, the handiness is good. Like getting up here for for control is good, but being able to hold it back down here for some real power cuts or chops is also really good. It's good for carving. It's good for... It's not great for chopping these out, okay? This this one is uh, the right-handed axe, okay? So it's flat on the left, curved on the, on the right. So if you're trying to chop V's and stuff, this is why I always say this is a terrible axe for um, camping with. You're not getting a good V, okay? You get a lot of control this way, this way it can be a little dangerous there might be a little bit of glancing and so if you're if, if you got your hand here zing you don't want to be doing that aside from that look if you take care of these axes i know grandsters are very expensive this is a lot more expensive than it was when i bought it but if you take care of them you're passing them down you know i always promise you guys that when i do a uh a first impressions i'm going to do a long-term review so here we go if you're looking to buy one i say go for it <laughs> i think it's a great axe 
but just be aware that you're gonna have to spend a lot more money than you did about 10 years ago. Also, this is not my chop to the line axe. I, when I'm carving a spoon, I like to, char, to chop right up to the line. This axe is good for making a spoon blank, but it's a little too big for when you're trying to get real sort of fine work happening. I used to swap this out for my tiny little wetterlings that I've shown you guys a lot of. Um, but now I've got some, some other stuff that will be in future videos um, that is much, much better for chopping to the line than even my little tiny wetterlings is. But yeah, I love this axe, and if you do have a lot of money and you're interested in one, I say get it. I say get it. If you don't have that much money, there are other options. Uh, and also, if you want an axe that is going to be a good carver and camp axe, there's a video coming up on this, but the Council Tool Camp Carver, you can't go wrong. So that's all she wrote. Thanks for hanging out with me for this review, this long-term review of the Swedish Carving Axe by Grassfish Brooks. Please get the conversation started down below. What I'd like to know this week is, do you carve? If so, what's your go-to axe? Aside from that, please share the video. And if you like what I'm doing here, then please leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's okay. The frowny thumb works too. Thanks for watching, guys.